Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MWC Barcelona. The next session will commence in five minutes. Huawei Ocean Store Data Storage. Convergence of all possibilities. Ocean is the starting point of all possibilities. It's where we came from. It's where we are heading for. In the ocean of data, we leverage the power of convergence to unleash the potential in explosive data. Facing complexity, we adapt with stability to make data storage clean, sustainable, and reliable. Facing changes, we adjust with agility. We enable efficient and on-demand data storage management. Facing bottlenecks, we create unlimited potential. We build new types of storage to help discover miracle of lives. Facing opportunities, we thrive ecologies. We respond to future business surge with innovative technologies. We choose for never-ending exploration. Green. Accelerate. Innovate. Let's embrace a green and digital future. Huawei Ocean Store Data Storage. Convergence of all possibilities. is the starting point of all possibilities. It's where we came from. It's where we are heading for. In the ocean of data, we leverage the power of convergence to unleash the potential in explosive data. Facing complexity, we adapt with stability to make data storage clean, sustainable, and reliable. Facing changes, we adjust with agility. We enable efficient and on-demand data storage management. Facing bottlenecks, we create unlimited potential. We build new types of storage to help discover miracle of lives. Facing opportunities, we thrive ecologies. We respond to future business surge with innovative technologies. We choose for never-ending exploration. Green, accelerate, innovate. Let's embrace a green and digital future. Huawei Ocean Store Data Storage, convergence of all possibilities. Ocean is the starting point of all possibilities. It's where we came from. It's where we are heading for. In the ocean of data, we leverage the power of convergence to unleash the potential in explosive data. Facing complexity, we adapt with stability to make data storage clean, sustainable, and reliable. Facing changes, we adjust with agility we enable efficient and on-demand data storage management. 
facing bottlenecks. We create unlimited potential. We build new types of storage to help discover miracle of lives. Facing opportunities, we thrive ecologies. We respond to future business surge with innovative technologies. We choose for never-ending exploration. We accelerate, innovate. Let's embrace a green and digital future. Huawei Ocean Store Data Storage, convergence of all possibilities. Ocean is the starting point of all possibilities. It's where we came from. It's where we are heading for. In the ocean of data, we leverage the power of convergence to unleash the potential in explosive data. Facing complexity, we adapt with stability to make data storage clean, sustainable, and reliable. Facing changes, we adjust with agility. We enable efficient and on-demand data storage the management. The next session will begin shortly. Please take your seats. Facing bottlenecks, we create unlimited potential. We build new types of storage to help discover miracle of lives. Facing opportunities, we thrive ecologies. We respond to future business surge with innovative technologies. We choose for never-ending exploration. We accelerate, innovate. Let's embrace a green and digital future. Huawei Ocean Store Data Storage, convergence of all possibilities. Ocean is the starting point of all possibilities. It's where we came from. It's where we are heading for. In the ocean of data, we leverage the power of convergence to unleash the potential in explosive data. Facing complexity, we adapt with stability to make data storage clean, sustainable, and reliable. Facing changes, we adjust with agility. We enable efficient and on-demand data storage management. Facing bottlenecks, we create unlimited potential. We build new types of storage to help discover miracle of lives. Facing opportunities, we thrive ecologies. We respond to future business surge with innovative technologies. We choose for never-ending exploration. Green. Accelerate. Innovate. Let's embrace a green and digital future. Huawei Ocean Store Data Storage. Convergence of all possibilities.
in hospitals. Our systems are helping to save lives. Our intelligent data infrastructure provides 24-7 healthcare data services. Doctors can diagnose and treat patients more precisely. Energy powers the world. We safeguard energy production. Our intelligent data infrastructure supports plug and play and cloud-based ONDM, alleviating the safety concerns regarding your most remote plans. For the financial industry, data flows can provide strong momentum. Our intelligent data infrastructure adopts a converged architecture and can help you control risks in real time and target your marketing efforts with enhanced agility, efficiency, and intelligence. Sounding the opening course of the next movement of the industrial revolution, the era of smart manufacturing. Our intelligent data infrastructure helps you keep pace with the market changes and revolutionize your industry. From the heart of the city to the ends of the earth, let's connect everyone and everything. With intelligent data infrastructure, we are here to help you build a fully connected world. Huawei Intelligent Data Infrastructure, born for an intelligent, fully connected world, now coming to you. Dear guests, welcome to MWC 2023 Data Storage Summit. Our meeting will begin in a couple of minutes, uh, but before uh, we start, uh, you all have a, a paper uh, with a QR code on your uh, chair. Uh, please scan it and fill uh, the survey. Uh, a small gift will be given uh, to those of you who complete it uh, once you get out. So thank you, and we'll soon start. Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to MWC 2023 Data Storage Summit. I'm Dr. Asaf Natanzon, I'm the Chief Architect of Huawei Storage, and I'll be your moderator today. This summit focuses on storage for any application. Technological innovation is driving full digital transformation of industries, and advances in data storage are driving new value forms in the digital age. With the emergence of applications such as gene sequencing, EDA manufacturing simulation, high-performance computing, and autonomous driving, massive data volume increases rapidly. Data storage will become one of the core competitiveness of enterprises' digital transformation. At the same time, with the rise of ransomware and other cybersecurity attacks, data security is becoming more and more important. Data disruption has become unacceptable, and protecting the core data from any threats has become urgent. At this meeting, we invited the VP of West European uh, Region of IDC, customers from the MSP and electric power industries, as well as VP and Chief Architect of Huawei Data Storage Product Line, to discuss and exchange uh, with each other. Welcome again. First of all, Let's give a warm applause to Vice President of Huawei Data Storage Product Line, Yidong Wong, for our opening speech. Welcome. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to MWC Barcelona 2023. Today, we are one step closer to a better world powered by intelligence. Data has been recorded and passed down. 
contribution to every advance in celebration. Since the fourth industrial revolution, digital technology is adding everywhere, making the most of the data and propelling our economy and society. The digital journey across industries is now at a critical stage with explosive growth in data requirements. Emerging services means different data applications. Code data become hot to produce more data values. Data security just face greater challenges. Carbon neutrality is a goal for everyone. So the latest data infrastructure needs to handle the massive data, which needs to satisfy requirements of efficient storage, on-demand mobility, and fully explore data values. Huawei believes that the digital transformations open up opportunities around the world. At Huawei, we are devoted to create innovative products to drive our digital economy forward. To achieve this, we have over 4,000 R&D engineers in 12 R&D centers worldwide and gain more than 3,000 patents. I'm proud to say that our products has been used by more than 18,000 customers and more than 115 countries and regions in the world. We provide efficient and reliable offline storage for scenarios such as financial cost transactions, career billings, and so on. Faced with natural disaster and man-made attack, we provide end-to-end -end backup and disaster recovery and ransomware protection solutions. We also delivered unified and multi-protocol support tiered scale storage for hybrid workload of new applications, including some gene sequencing, energy exploration, autonomous driving, AI, and so on. For example, a leading automotive company in Europe deployed our high density scale storage for hybrid workload with more than 50 pegabytes capacity. As a result, our systems delivered with high performance and high scalability greatly reduce the capacity occupied and energy consumptions and improve the RMD efficiency of the Air 4, autonomous driving by 40%. Facing the opportunity and the challenges in the digital age, we will increase the investment in data storage. In addition, we will work with the global industry customers and the partners to build a reliable, powerful, cost-effective, green and secure data infrastructure to help in a wide range of industries meet your challenges, seize your opportunities, and drive business growth. We will also work with application software manufacturers, system integrators, channel partners, and research institutes to create more value for customers and industries. Today, we will introduce our latest storage products and Huawei's long-term development strategy and ideas for data centers. Our goal is to build a reliable data-centric storage foundation for diverse applications to survive in the intelligent world. Come and join us in the what's new in data infrastructure, constructions, and innovations to get prepared for what's next. I wish this firm a great success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Idong Wong, for your wonderful speech. Huawei Data Storage helps customers accelerate digital transformation, adhere to open cooperation strategy, and continuously create greater value for customers and punters. I'm honored to present you the keynote, 
innovative data foundation, unleash the digital power. So in the technology business, challenges uh, lead to innovation. And we do see a lot of challenges uh, in the data storage. The first challenge is the data challenge. As you know, data is growing exponentially. And already over 80% of newly created data is unstructured. Unstructured workloads are becoming the core primary workloads. And this means we need to adapt our storage systems uh, to adhere to these uh, workloads. The second challenge we see, and I believe you all, all of you read about it in, in, the, in the news uh, almost daily, is the ransomware challenge. On average, a single ransomware will cost uh, an organization $1.85 million. This is not just uh, the cost of paying the ransom, but also the damage to reputation, the downtime, and other uh, problems. And ransomwares are here to stay. So uh, we need to have the storage systems ready for the ransomware. The next challenge is the ecosystem challenge. Today, on average, an organization has uh, over 100 uh, different applications. And um, traditional applications uh, are being replaced by modern applications which are designed for multi-cloud and built over containers. And obviously, we need the, the storage system to support it. In the past, when you were going to buy a storage system, first you looked at the capacity, the performance of the system, and obviously you looked for reliability. We spoke about five nines in the past. Today, we're speaking about six and seven nines. But today, this is not enough. When you buy storage, you need uh, the storage has uh, built-in security. Uh, it is energy efficient because the, the, the growth of the data. Can you hear me? Because the major growth of the data um, means that uh, we need more and more storage, but we cannot afford using uh, more electricity. And obviously, our storage system needs to support the multi-cloud. So how do we at Huawei prepare for uh, the future of the data center? Our architecture for the future is flash to flash to any, or how we like to call it, F to F to X. So the first flash, I believe, already is already, everybody is already there. This is the flash for uh, the production storage. Uh, I believe almost all data centers uh, have uh, flash uh, devices for the production. Uh, we have uh, two separate systems, one for the core uh, services, uh, the Ocean Store Dorado, and the other system is uh, the Ocean Store Pacific uh, for mass storage. The second F is the backup. We built uh, Ocean Protect as a backup uh, storage built from ground up around Flash. Next, there is a, obviously we need to archive and tier our data. And this is the X, the any. We can tier to anything, any media, hard drive, uh, or a Blu-ray, or also to the cloud. In addition to that, we recommend customers uh, to also have an isolation zone where they keep a other copy of the data uh, to protect against ransomware. Is it working? I think it's not working. It's working? Okay. Sorry. Uh, so uh, we, we need an isolated zone for uh, being able to protect our data against ransomware, such as uh, with end-to-end uh, -end encryption, with, uh, with uh, anti-tampering abilities, uh, because ransomware is one of the biggest problems today. The network for uh, the newly data center should be all of IP. The storage system should be ready for the multi-cloud data center. And, uh, and obviously, we need to design uh, our hardware and software together to, re to give end-to-end -end acceleration to all types of application. Now, let's deep dive into our uh, storage system. Starting with uh, our Ocean Store Dorado, this is a unified uh, block and uh, file uh, storage system. I hope all of you already know it. Uh, but today, I'm going to focus uh, on Ocean Store Dorado NAS. So uh, Ocean Store Dorado NAS is built on the OceanFS uh, innovative distributed file system. And this NAS gives you the best performance in the industry. It's 30% higher performance than any of our competitors. And this is due to the fact that the, the storage adjusts itself uh, to the workload. And, and depending on the application, for example, the block size uh, will be changed. The reliability of Ocean Store Dorado NAS uh, is uh, the highest in the industry. We support uh, seven nines uh, of uh, availability. This is due to the fact that this is the only NAS uh, supporting uh, active, active uh, on multiple sites. In addition to that, Ocean Store Dorado has built in one click uh, protection for uh, your Kubernetes application. So you can just choose the pod or a namespace uh, right, 
press one click and the, the application is protected. And of course, I spoke already so much about ransomware, so we have a lot of uh, built-in ransomware protection, starting uh, with the built-in uh, detection for ransomware, uh, which detects uh, up to 99.9 uh, ransomware types. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a secure snapshot which pro protects your data against anti-tempering. So if you created these snapshots, nobody can change it. But as good as it is for uh, the, the core workload, these are not the only workloads available. So there are other workloads there which are very important, such as uh, high-performance data analytics, big data, video editing, and uh, backup and archiving. For such workloads, we built Ocean Store Pacific, the scale out uh, massive data storage. And we have also different models, such as the, the performance model, which is flash based uh, if the performance is uh, very, very critical. We have balanced models, which have a mixture between flash and uh, hard drive uh, for, for other workloads if, uh, if, uh, to, to reduce the cost. And obviously, we have uh, archive, work, archive uh, models uh, for the archive workloads, which are mainly based on a uh, hard drive. Again, Ocean Store Pacific has the best performance in the industry with uh, over 20% better performance than any other storage, again, due to the fact that we understand uh, the workload and can uh, change the behavior accordingly. We're using AI-based intelligent flow control, which reduces uh, our latency by 15%. Ocean Store Pacific is designed for all workloads. What's great that you can uh, support uh, seamlessly uh, the same data with multiple protocols. So we have one set of data. You can one time access it uh, over file. Then you can access it over object and later maybe over Hadoop. But you don't need to make another copy of your data. You can access the same data with different protocol. We also have built in tiering. Uh, you can tier from SSD to HDD. You can tier from, uh, to cloud or to Blu-ray. And you can also tier from a file uh, to object storage. The data reduction is also uh, the best in the industry with average of two to one for uh, the massive uh, data workloads. But of course, we cannot uh, give up uh, about the uh, security and availability. Also, Ocean Store Pacific has uh, built-in ransomware protection with uh, ransomware detection and a secure snapshot. And we also, the only storage that supports up to 12 active sites for availability, and you can keep your data either uh, mirrored on 12 sites, or we also have a multi-site RAID system. So I spoke a little bit about how to protect your data. Uh, let's deep dive into uh, Ocean Protect, our backup storage. Uh, so Ocean Protect is probably the only backup storage that was designed from ground up uh, to be flash-based. And this is why Ocean Protect gives the best performance in the industry. If we compare ourselves to the biggest uh, vendor uh, of uh, purposely built backup appliances, our uh, backup performance uh, for the high-end model, the X9000, are uh, three times faster than the highest model that the competitor have. Uh, and we reach 155 terabytes per hour of backup. When we restore, we are even better. We reach 172 uh, terabytes per hour, which is five times better than the competition. And 172 terabytes per hour means that if you need to recover one terabyte of data, it will take you only 20 seconds, just 20 seconds. In addition to that, we have the best data reduction in the industry. This is actually a pride point for me because the, the data reduction of Ocean Protect is based on uh, some inventions that I made. Uh, but it means that if you have 72 terabytes of data, the raw capacity it will take uh, in, in, in this case will be just one terabyte. And uh, of course, uh, resiliency is also uh, extremely important. Uh, we also have uh, here a built-in uh, support for, uh, for uh, ransomware protection with, uh, with uh, secure snapshots and also with, uh, with uh, other features such as uh, replication to an isolated zone. But also, unlike uh, our main competitors, uh, the Ocean Protect is an active-active storage, meaning, uh, meaning uh, if one controller fails, the backup doesn't fail, and it continues. You don't need to restart your backup. This is great. So now that I've described our systems, let's uh, have a, a little bit of uh, some announcement of a new product that uh, were announced uh, today. Uh, the first product I would like to introduce is uh, the industry first active active storage for small and uh, medium businesses. So we are happy to uh, announce the new entry level uh, Ocean Store Dorado uh, with capacity of uh, up to 50 terabytes. 
and also the entry level uh, Ocean Protect 3000 uh, backup storage. So these are storage arrays that were designed uh, for small and medium businesses. So because they are designed for small and medium businesses, the, the provisioning is simplified. You can provision within three clicks. The management is simplified, and you can proactively uh, predict the uh, performance and failures. But what's great, if you want to get it, you can get it actually very, very fast uh, because of our multiple uh, supply centers. Uh, if you order it, you'll get it within two to four weeks. That's it. And uh, of course, these are storages designed for small and medium businesses. But they have all the great features of our, uh, of our main storage arrays. So the availability is the best in the industry with the uh, six nines. Uh, because we are using our own uh, software and hardware uh, integrated, we get 30% uh, higher energy efficiency. Obviously, our deduplication is better as with the other system. It is 20% be uh, better than the competitors. And these systems are active-active, meaning if one controller fails, you can continue to, to do your backup uh, and, and, and uh, work uh, seamlessly. The second industry first is uh, our end-to-end -end, uh, ransomware protection uh, for both network and storage. So as you know, ransomware is a huge problem. We need to protect it everywhere, starting from the network. Uh, Huawei has state-of-the-art protection with uh, firewalls and, and, and sandboxes, uh, but this is not enough. We also introduced uh, the state-of-the-art uh, storage uh, protection from ransomware, where we have, uh, like I said, uh, built into the high-end uh, NAS uh, arrays, uh, there is a ransomware detection uh, before the event, during the event, and after the event. And we are also announcing the Huawei uh, cybersecurity appliance, uh, which will provide the same uh, abilities uh, even to the lower-end uh, uh, storage arrays. So in the storage, in addition to that, we have a, a secure snapshot, as I said, air gap replication. We also have end-to-end -end encryption, which will uh, help you uh, avoid the data leakage. And we have the industry fastest recovery. So if really you go to the state where you need uh, uh, to recover from your backup, uh, it will be the fastest with 172 uh, terabytes per hour. But actually, the novelty is we are the only vendors that actually have integration between the network and the storage system. So if the network uh, firewall, for example, this, 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 uh, discovers that somebody tried to access uh, some uh, IP address that uh, is related to some ransomware, it will immediately uh, notify the storage system. Uh, our data management engine, and the data management engine will close immediately the air gap. It will uh, create security, turn uh, old snapshots to security snapshots, and take action uh, of detection to see if uh, something is uh, corrupted. Another industry first is the first storage optical connection coordination for uh, disaster recovery. So in, a, in an extremely uh, important application, usually uh, you will install an active-active storage system uh, with a, a, an optical interconnect. The problem is when the network jitters. Uh, so uh, usually it, it takes the, the storage system uh, two minutes to describe that uh, there was a network jitter. And, uh, this is too much, because uh, if you wait two minutes uh, after the jitter starts, transaction will fail. Obviously, if you're in the financial uh, industry, failed transactions are uh, a catastrophe. Due to the fact that we at Huawei create both the network inter interconnect, the, the, the WDM device, and the storage system, we created the co coordination. Uh, the optical uh, device uh, actually can uh, monitor the, 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 the line uh, in very high accuracy in a microsecond level. And when it finds a problem, it will notify the storage, which will do the failover. And the failover will take only two, sec uh, two seconds. This means no transaction will fail. So I've described a few uh, novelties. Let's uh, talk again about uh, the multi-cloud enablement. Our storage arrays are ready for the multi-cloud. Starting with the data tiering, obviously we support tiering from our uh, storage arrays like the Dorado and the Ocean Protect uh, to Ocean Store Pacific uh, archive uh, storage. Uh, but we also support uh, tiering uh, to the cloud. And from Dorado, we, we also support a direct uh, backup to the cloud. In addition to that, our storage arrays support standard interfaces uh, to support uh, all the multi-cloud uh, uh, environments such as uh, we support RESTful API for DCS and the, and the other multi-cloud uh, management systems. Uh, we support uh, VVOLs and vRealize uh, for VMware. Uh, we support Cinder and Manila for uh, OpenStack. And of course, uh, we support a CSI uh, driver for uh, Kubernetes. And speaking about Kubernetes, 
our system uh, has the fastest uh, volume provisioning for Kubernetes, 30% uh, faster than any of our competitors. And uh, in addition to that, we have a built-in uh, uh, disaster recovery driver, which uh, enables you to protect your application uh, with a single click of a button. We are also happy to announce uh, Ocean, uh, Ocean Disk. Uh, this is an external uh, storage device with the lowest uh, latency in the industry and the highest performance. Uh, you can connect it uh, to your servers directly over NVMe, and this means you can create a data center with disk -like servers. This really is a great enablement uh, for a multi-cloud uh, environment. Next, of course, we are uh, committed to a low-carbon society, starting with our uh, manufacturing, which is green. So uh, our uh, production system may use uh, photovoltaic energy uh, to, to, to make it uh, more green. Uh, we use renewable materials, such as aluminum and tin, and all the production process is green. Once you use our system already, it's also great because our vision with flash to flash to anything means that uh, you're using flash, and flash is much more efficient than hard drives, reducing significantly uh, the, 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 the amount of energy you use. Our data reduction even farther reduces the, the, the energy usage, and the fact that we at Huawei produce both the hardware and the software means that everything is much more tightly integrated, and the energy utilization is much, much better. So if you are uh, in some industry and trying to use our system, uh, for example, in the finance industry, moving to our flex storage will uh, reduce 30% of your power consumption. And if you're in manufacturing, moving to our uh, all flex storage will slash 70% of your total uh, operational expenses. Now, uh, with this thing, uh, the, our great products, uh, let's uh, see a couple of uh, success stories. So uh, a top commercial bank in uh, the Asia Pacific uh, chose to do his uh, digital transformation using a uh, Huawei flash to flash to any. And this bank has a production system uh, with virtualization environment where he's using a uh, Ocean Store Dorado 8000 uh, NAS system uh, with Hypermetro uh, for Active Active. He also have a container-based platform where he's using a uh, Ocean Store Dorado NAS, again, Hypermetro Active Active. And these two systems are backed up uh, to uh, an Ocean Store, uh, Ocean Protect uh, 9000 uh, system, which uh, in its turn is also replicated to another Ocean uh, Protect 9000 system. So what did he get with this transformation? First of all, uh, he got, uh, for the sun, he got four times uh, the, 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 the amount of virtual machines uh, in the same uh, environment. So uh, for each system, he got uh, 1,000 VMs instead of 250 in the NAS. The latency reduced by a factor of 10, from 10 milliseconds to less than one millisecond. And the backup performance uh, increased by a factor of 15, from uh, less than uh, half a terabyte per hour to 7.2 uh, terabytes per hour. Obviously, the availability also increased uh, because uh, we support, uh, in, in this system, uh, we support three out of four uh, uh, controller failures. Obviously, you can get even to seven out of eight controllers. Uh, but uh, and this is also the industry-only active-active system. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the system is much more efficient. Uh, the, the, the space occupied by the system reduced by 60%, and the total cost of ownership reduced by 75%. Next, let's move to a top commercial bank in Turkey, which uh, uh, runs his uh, data exchange platform uh, with the uh, Ocean Store Pacific. Uh, the current system that uh, this uh, bank has is based on uh, open source storage. You have two separate systems, one from Istanbul uh, and the other one in, uh, in Ankara. He replaced this system with an active, active uh, uh, Ocean Store Pacific system, so uh, the objects uh, are, are uh, relocated on both sides. In the future, he's going to increase it and actually have uh, uh, multiple sites. So what did he get from this? First of all, he got the ultimate reliability with the active-active system, and he will get even uh, more availability when you have a multi-active system. Second, his performance increased by a factor of two, and the, the latency reduced by a factor of two. And in addition to that, everything is much more simplified because it's running over a simplified uh, S3 protocol. Uh, so I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, the talk. This concludes my talk. Uh, and uh, and uh, But uh, again, the talk was very short, and uh, there are a lot of many, many interesting things that I would like to, to show you. Uh, so 
I'm welcome to invite you to uh, the next uh, Innovative Data Infrastructure Forum of 2023, uh, which will take place uh, in May 23 and 24 in uh, Munich. Uh, we will have uh, two days of agenda with over 1,000 attendees, uh, two keynotes and eight sessions, and uh, very, very big exhibitions on. So you're all welcome uh, uh, to meet there, and uh, I'll be very happy to see you again. So. Thank you very much, and uh, now I'll move to my second role as a moderator. <laughs> so <laughs> now as the moderator, it's like Superman, I'm using uh, glasses. Uh, <laughs> so next, let's in invite uh, Mr. Duncan Brown, Vice President of Enterprise Research Europe, IDC, to share how to help enterprises build the strongest line of defense against ransomware in data centers. Let's hear uh, Duncan's point of view. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Duncan Bryan. I'm from IDC, and I'm here to scare you. So let's start with the big picture. This is the, uh, uh, the prevailing trend for the entire ICT industry worldwide. So we're accelerating what we call digital uh, business. So this is the amount of digital spend that's going on for the last five years uh, or so and projected into the, uh, into the future as well. Most of you will be familiar with the concept of digital transformation. We think we're now at a tipping point where the market is moving from a focus on uh, moving from uh, the analog to digital as something new and moving much more towards digital business as usual. So it's less about transformation and more about just embedding digital in our everyday business. So that's the, that's the tipping point that we are uh, at, um, at the moment. And of course, the digital spend just keeps rising. And what's interesting is that the share of revenue from your business is moving from an analog to digital very, very quickly. And so organizations, even in manufacturing and you know, where you're dealing with physical goods, they are also moving to digital business where their revenue, the vast majority of their revenue, is from digital goods and services. And the physical stuff is just a means to an end. I'll give you a couple of examples of that. So I, this isn't the scary slide. This is the opportunity slide. This is why we're doing what we're doing. This is why we're all engaged. All organizations are engaged in uh, digital transformation moving towards digital business. So this is the good story. Let's look at what digital business uh, looks like and how it operates. So in the old days, you would have a pretty much monolithic organization, and they would have a main uh, activity. They would make widgets, or they'd sell financial services, or, or something like that. But digital business allows you to do a whole bunch of other things as well. So we see organizations diversifying in terms of their products and services away from their traditional core business and adding things like financial services, so um, offering credit or insurance. Uh, they might move from a wholesale into a retail or B2B into a B2C uh, environment. Uh, they will increase the number of partners that they sell to and broaden their, their ecosystem of, of channels. Um, they might focus on monetizing their intellectual property. And so they'll sell intellectual property uh, to third parties and so on. So lots of organizations are diversifying their products and services away from their traditional core business. They're also diversifying in terms of the organizations and the ways in which they connect to third parties. So this could be customers, could also be suppliers and partners. And so the nature of business is becoming much more diverse and fragmented. And of course, you factor in cloud into that. So cloud allows you to connect organization to organization pretty much seamlessly. 
And then the whole range of communications technologies, anything from a simple email to Wi-Fi embedded uh, and to collaboration platforms like I just picked on G, uh, um, uh, Google+, Plus, but it could be anything else, any other cl collaboration uh, platform. And suddenly organizations, and this should look familiar to most of you, most organizations have this plethora of connections outside their organization. And this is the nature of digital business, which is good news. And your business wants you to do this. There is a catch, of course. And the catch is that we're trying to secure all this. And the bigger catch is if you look at things like ransomware, not only ransomware, but predominantly, that seems to be the, um, the, the threat uh, of the day, is that it uses this infrastructure against you. So as soon as it gets into your organization or into an organization that you connect with, and that's your business, then it spreads, and it spreads virtually at the speed of light. So it connects from device to device to device, to, from cloud uh, um, storage to cloud storage, from enterprise to enterprise, from application to application, very, very quickly, before, usually before, you've detected it and you know what's going on. So ransomware uses your organization against you. So you have to think about uh, uh, dealing with ransomware and addressing ransomware from an architectural sense. This isn't something that you can put a protection layer uh, ar around very easily. You have to think about it from an architectural sense. The ideas of a perimeter that we can draw around our own business, they've gone. That world has gone because of this, because of digital business and the need to uh, diversify your, uh, your business. So here's the scary slide. These are the facts around ransomware. So two thirds of organizations, so let's just say from there, this way, on average, you've been done with ransomware. Okay, and you're okay, on average. Okay, so two thirds, so just have a look around you and say, hmm, who's been done? Two thirds of organizations uh, have been done uh, by ransomware. That admitted. Okay, so the number actually might be a little bit higher than that. On average, it takes a business out of operation for five days. So now you can start doing some sums in your head about, uh huh. This could, uh, this could hurt me a lot. Now, some businesses, frankly, can cope with five days out of production um, if, that's their, uh, if that's their choice and that's the nature of their business. Some organizations can barely live without being online for five seconds, maybe, if you're a bank, five minutes, something like that. So five days would really hurt you. So already you should be doing some sort of risk assessment in your head to work out, ooh, could my business be down for five days? And that's an average. Yeah, sometimes less, could be a lot longer. Sometimes organizations have been taken out for a month or so. On average, organizations pay around $150,000 uh, to get their, well, hopefully to get their data back. They don't always get it back, of course. Sometimes, I mean, there's no quality of service with ransomware hackers, yeah? You pay the money and you might get your data back. You might. Good luck with that. Uh, $150,000 is an average. Uh, generally, you're asked to pay more if you're a bigger organization and the hackers will do the research. So they'll know what your global revenues are and they'll figure out, ah, oh, I, I can get millions from this company. Uh, tens of millions. So they'll do the research. So be prepared to have some interesting negotiation uh, with, uh, with, the, with the attackers. Almost half of organizations just pay the ransom. Why? Because they don't really have a strategy. It's usually a big surprise. So all my experience would, 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 uh, would lead me to advise you, don't be surprised by this, because it's, it's likely two thirds of organizations are, are getting hacked. But many organizations remain surprised when it happens, and their only option, really, is to pay the ransom and hope that they get the data back. 
The last number I want to share with you uh, is uh, based on IDC research. And there is a white paper with all of these numbers and, uh, and more. And I'll show you the, uh, the link with you uh, at the end of the, uh, the presentation. On average, organizations uh, will, um, uh, it will cost them $250,000 per downtime hour. Now, obviously, smaller businesses, less. Big businesses, much more. So an average quarter of a million dollars per hour. So if you multiply that number by the five days average dis disruption, you get to a really big number. So again, you can do the maths um, at home if you want. Yeah. So we're talking about big numbers. So this is really impactful stuff. OK. So what do we do about it? Well, I said you need to take an architectural approach to this. So this is, uh, this is a suggested uh, architecture that IDC has, has come up with. Um, the titles at the top, if anyone works in security uh, circles, uh, you'll recognize this as the NIST framework uh, out of the US. But it's a regular security uh, process framework. So we start with identify and, and protect. So generally, organizations are deploying thing, you know, things like firewall and endpoint to scan per, uh, consistently and permanently for bad stuff. That's fine as long as you know what the bad stuff looks like. Okay? And generally, maybe about half to 2 thirds of stuff we've seen before, we know what we're looking for. But this stuff is very uh, dynamic in terms of its profile. And hackers, of course, know that that's what you're doing. And so they, they, um, they morph their source code to make it look as if it's different. And so you've, there's this constant race between you updating your systems and the hackers updating their, uh, their uh, malware to, um, to try and circumvent your, uh, your protection. So, um, so it's a bit of an arms race going on. But anyway, you should certainly have that. Um, lots of organizations using Sandbox. Uh, so if something looks kind of suspicious, you might not have seen this before. Uh, so you just want to test it out. You put it into what's called a Sandbox, and you say play, and then just watch what happens. Again, uh, really useful technologies. The hackers also know that you've got this. And so they have Sandbox uh, detection capability in their ransomware to say, ah, oh, I'm in a Sandbox. I'm not going to do anything. And then so you let it go. And then say, aha, oh, I'm not in a Sandbox. And then it does its uh, thing. So again, we're in this kind of arm race. Uh, and the third approach we would always say is a situation awareness. That's just knowing what's go going on in the market. So in this theater, uh, situation awareness is knowing where the far exits are. Situ situation awareness in this context is what else is going on in the market? Are my peers being attacked by a particular ransomware? I should be talking to my peers about this stuff. There's no competitive advantage in, in, uh, in security. So we should be talking and sharing information with peers or with our national security agencies uh, and so on. So just the, what's going on um, around, the, um, uh, around the market in our, in our industry. If that doesn't work, and the chances are that you know, again, two thirds of organizations get hit. So two thirds of organizations, you know, this doesn't work uh, in, in entirety. Something happens. So ransomware works in a particular uh, way. It's, uh, it's, very, uh, it's very specific in terms of its replication. And when it finds a file, it, uh, it, it encrypts it and then just moves on to the next one blindingly quick. And then what else, what other devices am I connected to? what other network ports are around, and then just go through those. And then, just, again, just encrypt everything I find. It's not selective at all. It doesn't care. It just says, find a file and encrypt it, move on to the next one. So and I, some sort of way of, of continuous monitoring is, uh, is useful. It's also useful to have a technology um, that looks at anomalous file sizes. Our file size is ballooning very, very quickly. That's not normal. So if you encrypt something, generally, the file size uh, grows rapidly. And also, is a process starting at the top of my file structure and saying encrypt, 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 encrypt? Again, that's not really normal activity. That might be a solution uh, that, that we use that approach, but it's pretty rare. So it's likely to be something anomalous. So can you kill that process? Um, and then, uh, so, so pr uh, processor uh, um, uh, activity, and also uh, file transfer sizes. So sometimes organizations, um, hacker organizations, extract the file if they can, 
and then encrypt your, your copy of it. So they've got a copy of it as well. So they actually steal it and encrypt your version. Okay. If that doesn't work and you do get uh, attacked successfully by, by ransomware, what can you do? Well, the first thing is to try and detect as quickly as you can what's going on and isolate that process or that, that, that file store. So that file store might be uh, encrypted, but at least it's not spreading uh, throughout uh, your organization and then onto your uh, other connected uh, partners. Um, Remedia is basically to get rid of the ransomware uh, itself so to, do the, to do the cleaning. Um, and there's various tools and technologies enable you to do that. And the last thing, of course, is you need to restore your files back to where they were before. If I was going to spend one dollar on any of this process, where do you think I would spend it? I'm going to spend it in this last box here. Why? Because if anything else fails, that's my last step. Right? If that fails and I get done, it's game over. I, 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 can, I can only pay the ransom and fingers crossed hope that I get my data back, and I may not. There's no quality of service with ransomware. So if I'm going to spend one dollar, I would focus on, on the restore. Okay? So, that, so that's why we're talking about ransomware in a, in a storage conference, because it, it, the, the, the way in which you restore is, is from your, your storage architecture. So we're talking about building this kind of resilience into your, into your architecture. So quite often, organizations have this kind of th this, uh, this architecture. You've got the network layer. You should certainly build in some security capability into that. So increasingly, organizations are looking at the network layer and the storage layer in their architecture as, as codependent. So if we get some protection in, in network layer and in storage layer, then we're beginning to be in a good place. In the live data, you should absolutely be not only having your, uh, your live data in operation, but constantly streaming out to a third party or a third, uh, a third source. Um, so with, with constant encrypted communication between, between the two. So we're protecting the data as it flows from the live store to the, to the backup, but usually also in a, in a, um, in a production environment. If we're architecting this correctly, we should then have an air gap. And um, Asaf talked about this uh, again. And uh, so you've got your isolated layer. And you have things like immutability, which means that the data cannot be changed. So using the th technology like uh, write once, read many uh, capability to, to make sure that uh, you can write to that data store, uh, so you can read from the data store, but you can't write to it. In other words, a malicious process can't write to it. Also, uh, capability like tamper, uh, tamper pre prevention. And importantly, before you restore from that known source back to your production environment, if there's an issue, they have the ability to scan for that to say, Am I absolutely 100% sure that there's no malware in the storage uh, um, area off, uh, offline? So it's still like a belt and braces, if, they, if you understand that, that, uh, that phrase. Um, so a backup of a backup. So scanning before restore is super important, just to make sure 100% that you're not restoring the malware back into the prediction system, because off you go again. Yeah, so it's re that's really important. OK, so just things on your checklist to have um, before you, uh, b b as you're building your architecture, some multiple copies of data. So we used to talk about in storage circles a three to one uh, approach. We're adding an extra one onto that. So three copies of data, two of which need to be on different types of media and uh, one off site. And the extra one is just keep that isolated air gapped version as well. So it's actually four copies of data. So three, three two, one, and an extra one, if that makes sense. Uh, air gaps data, uh, data source I talked about. Using snapshots is a really interesting technique. Just say, take a snapshot of where I am and just file that away. 
And you can do that multiple times uh, throughout the day, or depending on how much uh, data turnover and data churn uh, you have. But just taking instant snapshots so you can restore back to known points. You don't have to go back a week or so. You can actually go back um, minutes, if that makes sense for you. Depends on your, the nature of your business. Um, encryption both at rest and in motion. And if you're really interested in encryption in use, that's actually quite hard to do, but there are some really interesting technologies that allow you to do that uh, as well. If you're interested, let me know. Um, but certainly encryption uh, at rest and in motion is fundamental. Why? Because as I said earlier, the hackers are trying to steal your data, not just encrypt it. So encrypt it means you can't use it. Uh, uh, if they steal it, they can use it um, for monetization or just for blackmail or, or, or what have you. OK, and then a process of rolling back um, from your storage system back to your live, your live system. If there's one piece of advice I can give the industry, and that includes you folks, is please don't play the ransom. It's really tempting to do so, but it only encourages bad behavior on behalf of the, uh, the, the, the hackers. Um, so as an industry, I think we all need to agree don't pay the ransom. That also means that you've got to have a better strategy, uh, which, which means that you don't have to pay the ransom. In other words, you can, you can restore from your data. I did mention the IDC white paper. Uh, if you've got your phones out, this is the QR code. Or if you grab someone from Huawei, uh, they will, uh, I'm sure, direct you towards it. There's lots of uh, new data points in the white paper. and. Um, and lots of uh, information and, and good advice as well. It was written by people much more clever than I am, uh, so they know their, their stuff. Uh, so if, you, if you're interested, so let me get out of the way of the, of the QR code. There you go. Uh, hopefully that's it. Be interesting and useful. Um, if you have any questions, then uh, that's my email address. Thanks very much. So thank you very much, uh, Duncan. Uh, it was a really, really wonderful speech. Uh, of course, you're all welcome to download the, the white paper. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, in the previous two topics, uh, we've seen that the technological innovation is driving comprehensive digital transformation. These changes bring uh, new challenges to IT infrastructure. How can we cope with these difficulties? Let's listen to. Getanio De Pascale, the Chief Sales Officer of Mac Group. Welcome, Getanio. Wow, what a big ad. It's me, that one. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Getanio De Pascale. I'm Sales Officer in the Mac Group. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you to all of you for attending this uh, afternoon speech. Let me say thank you to uh, Mr. Zanton for uh, introducing me for uh, his uh, speech, for Mr. Wang for uh, his speech, and to, um, a big thank you to Mr. Duncan Brown for scaring us to death. So we are now in the good mood to present. Okay. Okay. As I said, I'm a salesperson. I'm not an IT guy. Uh, that's why I'm very happy that the um, speeches uh, be before uh, mine were about the technology. So. My speech will be, of course, about technology, about product, uh, but um, it will be also about people, about the relationship, uh, the partnership between, uh, between, between us and uh, Huawei. So this is our group. Um, we are a system integrator, an Italian system integrator, a managed service, a managed service provider. If I could be romantic and maybe dramatic, uh, we were born in the south of Italy almost 23 years ago in a special economic zone, if you know what I mean. Not the right place to start an IT company, but everything went good, so we are now here. And uh, like my boss always says, uh, he always say, tells this joke, at that time we were too poor to be a reseller, so we start an IT company and we decided to be on the service side, so we became a service provider. But to be honest, to be, to be serious, um, that guy, Gianluca, my boss, the founder, had the vision, and this vision is now our reality. He had the vision of uh, many data centers, age data centers all over the country. He had the vision of uh, a company 
with uh, engineers all over Italy. He had uh, uh, a dream about uh, a system integrator, which is now Mac. Those are the logos of our, uh, our uh, group. We are now 16 companies working in different sectors, di different uh, vertical market. We go from the Mac Formazione, which, is, which was our training uh, business unit. It's now more or less an academy, more uh, even uh, we can say a university. We go um, a huge um, digital communication and marketing um, agency, which is fantastic. Uh, we are um, vertical in the IoT market uh, of um, agriculture, smart cities, smart building, and we got lots of things to, to deploy. This is the Italian map. You already, you already saw this map. Maybe you, it's, you, it's not familiar for you because that one is the south of Italy and should be down the north of Italy. But as I said, we were born in the south. So for us, the most important part is the south of Italy. We were born um, <laughs> in Avellino. You see now all our headquarters, all our uh, um, uh, data center, the federated data center age all over the country. We got engineers all over the country. And this is the, of course, the digital transformation. We already heard about the development and challenges. I said what, one thing at the beginning. We are a system integrator. We are a managed service provider. So challenges related to the digital transformation, all the risks about the security, for example, are in our charge. Our customers only need to see the opportunity of the digital transformation. And this is our big challenge. This is uh, what we are facing. On, and on the first row, you see our uh, uh, most important market, the most demanding uh, um, and critical from the point of view of the storage. So the most demanding, data demanding or storage critical for us, the media, hospitality, healthcare, those are uh, our marketing. And the explosion of the data, of course, brings us many risks, many, many challenges. Of course, we need to avoid data breaches, data leaks, but we already saw how uh, to do it. We need to reduce the power consumption and emission, especially during the last few years, you see how it's going to be. We need to reduce the total uh, cost of ownership, which is related um, even uh, um, in, in time consumption, uh, uh, not just, uh, we are not just talking about power or hardware, we are even talking about human and their capacity to, uh, to run the business. And that one in the last row are um, the, what um, our customers are demanding from us. So, the application needs to stay in real time on, always on, say the data needs to be 24 hours a day available. They cannot afford latency, they cannot afford failure. So for us, a data, uh, an efficient data duplication or um, a data reduction, it's something very, very useful for us. For us, uh, it means to reduce the timing for backup and recovery data. And of course, we were looking for a solution who could uh, reduce our footprint. So we, uh, to summarize, we were looking for a green, reliable, and efficient storage solution. And uh, I think it was in 2018, 2019, we approached Huawei. That one could be the picture the day after we deployed the, the old flash Dorado storage. And of course, yes, we, it was a success, yes. Um, at that time, as I said, uh, we uh, already had uh, the data centers, but we used to have a storage solution from different uh, vendors, and we were quite happy about it. We used to run the business uh, easily. But we knew that it was something better, that we could uh, reach a lower TCO, we could reach uh, higher performance, even because, for example, we are a um, cloud provider for the public administration. We are certified, so we need an um, uptime, we need, to, we need some standard to, to be respected. So 
we adopted uh, the Dorado as since uh, from the very beginning of the POC, the Dorado just stood out the, comp the competition. So uh, if you ask me why did we choose Huawei, yes, of course, it's because of the technology. Because if you think about the performances, it didn't, it, they are just, uh, they just overcome the, the competition. But if you think about the delivery time, the support they give you, there's just no competition. Okay? Those are the applications that uh, are usually running uh, on that uh, storage solution, on the Huawei storage solution, are a solution that deployed to the healthcare market, to the cloud market, to our customer. I'm not going to try to sell our solution. If you want to, me to sell the solution, I would be quite happy, but we can have a chat later about it. I just want to make sure that you understand what, uh, what I'm trying to um, express. So, when we sell something to a customer, we need someone to be committed with us. We need a solution who could be very, very exceptional. And this is the other, the other um, reason why we choose Huawei. I said we choose Huawei about the technology. Why we did continue using Huawei technology, Huawei product? Because we, after, when we, when we, we, we were okay with the, the storage when we uh, were okay about the technology solution, we start uh, investigating. So, and we found uh, a local team in Italy. It was quite excellent, dedicated completely to us. We received uh, full life cycle support from Italy, from Europe, from the headquarters. So this is uh, what really mattered for us. Uh, if we, we were looking for another, we were not looking for another vendor, we were looking for a partner. And this is what we found in Huawei. Those are the, uh, just the, the most important key of the relationship. I just want to use, time is running out, I just want to use my last few seconds to uh, tell you something, not really technological. When I moved to Avellino, the city where I live now, when I joined Mac, I experienced uh, a situation which is, uh, it could be, it could sound strange at the beginning, but it's very usual. If you go there, if you start living there, uh, people start asking you three questions. What's your name, what's your name? Where are you from? And let me say it in Italian, a chi appartiene? <laughs> Those three questions are very important for them. The last one could be translated in something like, uh, who do you belong to, okay? Because for them, it's important to understand, of course, your name, your surname, where, do you, where are you from, so where do you live? But um, who are your partners? Who are your family? Who are your ecosystem? Can we trust each other? Are you the good one? Whose side are you on? So now, if you ask me, who do I belong to, I can proudly say I belong to Mark and I belong to Huawei. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Gatanio, uh, for your wonderful speech. Uh, we look forward for more customers in the MSP industry uh, to have more in-depth cooperation with Huawei in the future. Next, I would like to invite PTPLN, Chief Information Technology and Digital Management, Suroso Isnandar, to share uh, his storage planning for a successful PLN digital transformation. Let's listen to his views. Thank you, moderator, for the time. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, the honorable speakers and also delegates. My name is Suroso. Um, I work for PLN, which is the only power utility company in Indonesia. Indonesia is the largest uh, country in Southeast Asia. Uh, PLN serving 270 uh, million population, and our best customer is uh, 86, uh, mil 86 million customer. And from, from this operation, our asset is around uh, 110 billion US dollar, with the annual uh, gross revenue is around, um, around 20 billion uh, US dollar. Um, today, I would like to share about the, how we are planning the uh, storage requirement for a successful digital transformation in PLN. Probably you are wondering why the power utility company are 
getting lost in MWC conference. But basically, um, we are on the middle of business transformation. The business needs of utility is move uh, faster than ever before. Our customer requirement is always increasing and increasing. For example, we have 86 customers. From those, we have around 40 million prepaid meter. The prepaid meter we have, we still using a token system. Means that the customer buying token, and then we give them 16 digits, and then those 16 digits will be key in manually into the meter. At first, it looks like nice thing, but now the customer already complaining. This is not convenient for them. So we are in the brink of the uh, full transformation with a vision that we are to be a leading electricity company in Southeast Asia and also number one customer choice for energy solution. And in order to establish that, to achieve that PLN vision, then uh, we need a technology advancement as the enabler of our transformation program. Overall, the business transformation mostly rely on the digital transformation. And we have 21 uh, digital breakthrough in order to move on into the new uh, PLN. For example, we are digitizing our power plant. We are digitizing our transmission control and telemetry system. We are building a new control system. We are also digitizing our distribution, our retail, and our customer services. Not only that, we are also digitizing the process on procuring primary energy. So uh, we have 21 uh, digital initiative to transform PLN into the new uh, company which is ready for the digital world. Um, today I would like to share how we, uh, our storage needs from our new business scheme uh, to be uh, planned and also implemented with our uh, partner here. So um, from those 21 uh, business breakthrough, one of them is installing which is called smart meter or advanced metering infrastructure. This advanced metering structure on the customer side, we need installing a new smart meter. And then we need to have the fiber optic connection or other means of communication from the smart meter, our backend office, which is meter data uh, 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 management system. Um, this year alone, in 2023, we are planning to install a 1.2 million smart meter for our two, uh, 1.2 million customer, which is uh, moving forward for 4 million by the end of 25. And for the next 2030, we estimate that around 10 million meter will be a smart meter. And this is, will need a whole digital uh, infrastructure. And of course, the benefit of uh, moving from the existing meter system into the new smart meter through advanced metering infrastructure, it will give us a real-time reading of the consumption. Hence, we can uh, operate more efficiently and we can maintain and decrease our losses. Not only in that, we will have a full information of our customer. We can capture the full consumption uh, of the customer, what time they are going to increase their load and what time they are reducing their uh, domestic consumption. Uh, for sure, we will have all those full data. And then also, we will have the correct reading of the uh, reading from the meter. This will bring a whole lot of challenges. The performance, the capacity, and also the reliability of overall uh, advanced metering infrastructures will be at stake if we don't choose the right technology for that. With a full stack storage solution from our partner, um, we have, for example, in this example, uh, the first application for the meter data management system and also for our uh, billing system for our customer. And the most important thing is the backup. The backup is very, very um, important in case because in, in this two-day cyber threat, and there are very high possibility that our infrastructure will be knocked down by some malware activities or something. And we have to make sure we have to have a good storage with uh, containing a recent rollback from the uh, current state in order to re recover the system. So working with our partner Huawei, we are already installing the uh, Ocean Star Dorado, uh, all flash storage. We also use the um, hybrid type of storage and also we maximize and optimizing those storage system uh, for the backup storage. And the values it brings for PLM, first we have a single interface, provide dedicated personnel to follow up and promote escalation if we have a problem in the storage, which can be quickly closed 
hence reducing the operation and maintenance risk. Not only that, um, the technical consultant as our partner need to be in there 24 hours, not only when they're installing the system, not only when they're getting the uh, work at the first place, but they have to be in there as our partner for along the duration of the lifetime of the storage. And of course, we are looking at the best practices and training. And also, we're looking at the solution that bring the lower footprint of carbon. The decarbonization has become one of the uh, digital transformation program of PLN. Therefore, across a whole business side, we have to make sure that our component are actually contribute less emission. And therefore, uh, the, for the main data center, we implemented the Ocean Store Dorado. And for the disaster recovery uh, center, we have also installed the Ocean Star Dorado. In, in the pro, in, by having this kind of life life and redundant system, we'll make sure that the program for cleaner power generation will be taking place as intended, and also the digitalization, a whole cross of the asset of the transmission, distribution, also retail can be achieved. And ultimately, we will have an ICT system uh, or the digital system which is green oriented. And those all flash storage have to build the green and low carbon data center with a very, very good performance. And we don't have any issue at all when uh, looking at the data. And also, the uh, disaster recovery solution provides that we have almost perfect reliability. This is very important, especially when we are dealing with 83 million customers, 270 million population. Um, the backup system is really, really important. So we have the active-active architecture and also high data reduction ratio to make sure to keep that this will operate with high efficiency. And with all those considerations, then we coming into our projection for the next uh, seven uh, years in terms of our needs for the storage. Uh, taken alone for this year, for example, if we are successfully install 1.2 million smart meter into our customer, then the, we will need a 113 a terabyte data need to be stored. This is the size, the minimum size that we need to have. If somehow we can improve this, increase this meter into four, then we need around 300 and more than 370 terabyte. And if we can achieve into 16 million customer, then we are passing the petabyte uh, size of the data. Uh, looking at the 25, 27, and 29, we estimate if we do not grow our smart meter more than 1.2 uh, million customer, then we will achieve more than one petabyte by 2029. But this will happen more quickly than we thought if we are successfully implement our program of 4 million smart meter in 2025. So this meter data management system is very, very crucial for PLN operation because this data are actually uh, a treasure for PLN. We have a whole behavior of customer that we can analyze and with, with doing the, the right data analytics, then we can provide the ads on solution. We can offering the ads on products into our customer. So this uh, meter data management system, this capacity uh, need to be considered based on several factors. First one, the average size of the objects will grow two or four times larger than the existing condition and also uh, we need to make sure that the data duplication will help us to anticipate any, any kind of event of unpredictable uh, event that might uh, compromise uh, the safety of the data on the customer. So this is more or less what I can share this afternoon. Uh, this slide will end my presentation. Uh, once again, I appreciate that our cooperation, PLN cooperation with you, Huawei, proved that we have a very robust and reliable storage system. And by this uh, consideration, we, we are thinking that we still expand the cooperation for much, much longer time. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much, Rosso, for your great talk. And uh, thank for all the guests that we had here uh, for the wonderful sharing. Uh, I believe the, the, ben the audience also benefited a lot. Uh, at the end uh, of our keynote speech at the Data Storage Summit, thank you for your presence.
Uh, next, you can move to the exhibitional or nearby coffee break uh, for in-depth discussion. And thanks again for your attendance. Uh, if you fill the survey, uh, you're welcome to uh, go uh, outside the door and get your small gift. And again, thank you. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I hope you also enjoyed it too. Thank you. Thank you for attending MWC Barcelona. As you leave, please ensure that you have all of your belongings with you. We would like to wish you a safe journey home and look forward to meeting you again next year.